Okay, so today what I want to do is to carry on with working on the resources, reforming, uh, refining resource, the resource refinement, simplification. Last time I removed create info being held on by loaded resources for the lifetime of that, well, resource having being loaded. That was a thing as part of the bring up for development and should still continue to be used for development purposes, but for production, that's not really useful. Typically you want to look, use the, that, that create info data, load the resource and discard it. You want to use, keep as little extra stuff around in memory as possible. Now, as part of that, I realized that uh, in the import uh, functions calls that I have scattered about, I still have these functions such as the create processing functions as can be seen here for like image material mesh shader all this stuff is used in when registering yaml because what used to happen is in these calls uh you'd pass both things you have two things when you read a yaml file you could import the create info and then you could use that imported create info to create one of those resources and i'm pretty sure i don't even use this anymore if, like if i actually go to dot create i set it i check for it and then i just never use it now i'm pretty sure that this like i said what used to happen is if i go find this location I set it, I whatever. Oh, here in the importer. When I got create info or git, I used to probably as part of simulation or something like that, I used to have like a git resource function, which would go into here and in both import the create info and then immediately use that create info to create the resource. That is no longer the case here. Now you can get the create info, hang on to it, and maybe in the future create a resource with it but they're no longer tied together, right? Back in the day, I needed them together for whatever. I hadn't built up the system enough, enough to have to be able to split them out, but obviously today I have. So first off, that's got to go. That has, these have got to go. This These kind of make things a little bit more complicated. They're gone. Just get rid of them. Amazing, like that, just like that. Um. So I need to, okay. Let me actually start from the beginning. This, these create functions, just gone. Creating those resources is responsibility of those who will want those resources or the loaders nowadays. Uh, I'm sure if I actually check a loader for uh, YAML source, the material loader, if it needs something, it will find it, find the resource or it will create it here. So that's being handled elsewhere it's no longer part of this so let's get rid of that that's removed i also need to do same same thing on that side now function that creates a resource of the proper type based on the node yeah that's not necessary anymore instead you can just you import the create resource and then you go through the simulation simulation will choose whatever loader has marked itself as being capable of loading that resource type so there is that those are reduced go down to importer or i can just go like dot import wherever this is so this becomes that can i get okay get rid of this so this is also just going away this pipe she's gone 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 import function I'll kill I, I I'll still keep it as a structure type I think I mean it makes no real difference but it, it'll be much easier to re-expand if necessary in the future for the moment I'm not quite comfortable enough to remove that stuff quite yet so we get that then I go back to import registration for this reduce that Use that. Let's 
Okay, this probably means I don't need the resource pool anymore. That's gone, right? Yeah, there's a number of things I can get rid of out of here. Okay, uh, what else? Do I need these types? I don't think I even need these types anymore. Uh, no, this is all internal stuff. These are just gone. Uh, these are local the function types, right? Okay, then we get down to physics. Do the same thing here. Um, registering the components resource. Yeah, so I already kind of did that for the resource for the component types. This is just the one. Oh, but that was always being loaded directly anyway, so yeah, not much better. So we've got that. This is still necessary, but it's only for components. So that'll be better. Okay, collision shape. Yes, I need that. I don't need a resource pool. I still need a type depth for that. Collision shape is gone. Rigid body pool. Yeah, I still need that. So the rest of the stuff I still need. Collision shape, I do for the local function. Okay. That means I should only really have armature sitting down in the bring up. Hmm. Armature state, pool, I don't... Armature state, yes. I just don't need armature. No, I need that. I just... No, I need the local version of it. I don't need everything, though. Right. Okay. Get commit. Um, let me think of something real quick for this. Okay, so yeah, a byproduct of earlier iterations, resources used to be loaded at the same time as the associated create info as part of initializing resources. Uh, sorry. It's, part of initializing simulations, all resources need to be defined at the start. This has since changed. Resources are lazy loaded on demand and as such creation resources from their create flow is done as part of the appropriate loader. The appropriate selected loader instead. Okay, so that's that. That's a bunch of nice little uh, things cleaned out. Let me close all that and move on to the next item, which is to go to resource, source, uh, resource. Okay. Now, what I want to do is to remove the type or change up how this is done. Specifically, what I want to do is integrated as part of the data. So what I want to do is to, hmm, I am making resources more and the data that are held by it more flexible. So what do I, what do I mean by that? If I take, let's say an image, I have a basic image and let's say I decide to create a more advanced image. with some, you know, int stuff, whatever. Currently, if I create an advanced image, there is no way that a system that is looking for and expecting the original faux image type can work with the advanced image. So I would have to update that older system to the new image type. 
to use the new image type, even if the advanced image had the exact same stuff as the old image, even if I had, let's say, it as, you know, a subtype, old image, like that. If I had something like that, there's no way for the older um, system to recognize the advanced image and, and to be able to parse down to the old image. Not directly anyways, is if it's part of the, the uh, part of the same structure like this, or allocated together, or, or whatever the case may be. But there is, if I change things up, I can kill two birds with one stone here. Where if I, if I take a page out of the playbook of Kronos Group with their Vulcan and OpenXR, I can have both worlds kind of together. Where I can have, let's say, a faux resource type, R type, R type, something like that. I don't have it yet, but I will. And void star p next. If I do something like this, then what I can do is in the future. Of course, right now I only have faux, faux image type. And let's say this is an advanced image type that's a superset of faux image. What I can do is do something like this, where the first type that is found for the resource is like the superset, the, the, is the type that it is considered. It is, so when a system or a loader looks at the type, it'll say, it'll pick the first thing. It says, oh, this is an advanced image type, but you still want it to be backwards compatible if it has the same data with an older system. So what you can do is basically make this fo this P next point to the old image type. Even if you like kind of have it as like a faux image, image, image like that, you can have this just point to this. <laughs> So if you if I create the systems or the, the functions to be able to like follow p next chains for a particular type ID like this, then I can actually still ha be able to create supersets or more advanced types and still have things backwards compatible if they are. Um, then this also gives me some extra flexibility for adding some other other things. So like with the resource create info that I removed last time, I can have that resource create info still kind of carried around in like development environments as part of the pnext chain at the end of the pnext chain or something like that. And a number of, so this gives me, you know, this gives me an incredible amount of future flexibility for things as well as allows me to also like move the type away from being an integrated part down to uh, the, the data instead. So actually, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I'm probably not explaining it very well, but this is, if maybe it'll hopefully come together or be a bit more obvious soon if it's not. So let me go down to resource. I need to actually I'm going to move this resource type out from here and into here. It's just a separate little thing by itself. I'm going to include that. This will be just this year. Resource type depths. Like that. Okay, great. So this now will work fine like that. So let's kind of put them together and here we go. Type defs. And finally, vertex descriptor. It doesn't actually matter, does it?
So I got all those. Uh, in the source, I need to change the loader so that when it's loading, when it creates a new type, image data r type equals for source structure type image that. So image pro graphics resource structure type material mesh Oh, okay, that crashed. Give me a second to restart this then. Okay, so what was I? Mesh, uh, shader loader. So up here, oh, let's kind of move this stuff around a little bit. Not shader loader, but it is shader. Uh, vertex loader. Vertex loader. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, physics. Resource collision shape. And the source for setting the type. This is collision shape. And that just leaves armature as part of the bring up application. Right about here. And in the loader, so we have all of those in those locations. So If all this works, that means what I need to do then is as part of resource, I need to do two things. First off, type goes away. Then, uh, no, that also goes away from here. I need to set it as part of the initial thing. So after this, this becomes um, oh, Star e type equals p new resource. No, no, no. I need the I need to get the start because it's always going to be at the very start of the data portion. So I need to sorry. So resource type star resource get data of that the initial data uh, type so star <laughs> resource type equals type even if the rest of it's blank i at least have that so that means when it comes down to getting the type i can just basically this Just pass that in and just return star that. 
okay? Uh, that means I just kind of need to do this at these locations. Ooh. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I could just... You'll get the type that way, right? Oh, sorry, resource. And that'll be um, machined away, compiled out, compiled away. Since it's literally just going to be an offset of, like, this is already an offset, right? This is, if I can find it. This is literally an offset. So that's an offset on an offset. That should be compiled. That will compile out real nice. So here we go. Uh, give the resource. That's fine. Yeah, I have the I have the resource available everywhere. Okay. So if I do all that and I got rid of the type right now should work just fine. Yep. Okay, great. So like this. Implemented and means to and pointer change pointer the next things. Ah, the resource. From the resource, from the oh, resource like itself, now a required part of the resource data structure. Fill far more data and source flexibility in the future. Okay, so that's that. Material mesh shader, all this stuff. Okay, just close all that. Back to this. To go along with what I just cr added or created. So of course you have to get the top level type, but you also may want to have some other flexibility. Like you want to check if a resource has a particular type and secondarily to be able to get the resource data of a specific subtype that may be hiding in the chain. So, or at least the first one, export void const star resource get data get type data. It's going to be for resource and for resource type type that. And like I said up here, that was getting ID. Now it's getting so res. Export Boolean as type. Something like that. That makes sense. Faux resource resource and faux resource type. Which is basically just a function of this. This will call this and then just return whether or not it got a null pointer back out, I think. Something like that. So Resource, down the resource, go down here to where we have that call. 
So this gets the first one. Put that off to the side. Give me this. Let's do that. So I need to set um what's well, bow base out structure basically right now. Fonts star p data equals bow resource get data. So this will get a pointer to the first set. Now what I want to be able to do. Oh, I need to convert it like that, right? Uh, okay, foe base, fo base resource structure. I need to call. I need to create a type for this, basically. Base resource structure. includes that and void star p net okay we got that or that that and okay at this point E data at the end. Otherwise, I need to do while p data not equal null pointer. And I need to do two things. If p data r type is the type we're looking for, then return p data. This is the type. This is the at least the first in instance of the type that we've seen in the chain. Otherwise, p data equal p data next, which then goes back to if it's null pointer, it'll just end and return null pointer here. Let's doing that, yeah. Sign into from incompatible void star const. Okay, whatever. I'll just keep doing that over and over and over. And then return null point, return any of the data or return null pointer in the end. Okay, then the other one was going to be up here for getting the type. Return C that. Return. Get data. Not equal null pointer. Okay. Uh, I think those are pretty solid. I'll add those. Make sure. I mean, I don't, I'm not actually using them, so that's not actually going to break. We'll add that to the other thing. So whatever. I'll add it as a fix up for that. Next was going to be dealing with resource creation. Now, if I go into, let's say, the material loader, because I believe the material type has sub resources a fragment, sh a shader, and an image type, which it has to load in first. Now, as part of the material loader, what happens is. It's okay. It's looking for a fragment shader. If it doesn't have it, then it finds the resource. Keep in mind, it may not actually be the correct type. It's only getting it. I, and I checked down here for the correct type. Yeah, so I do have that afterwards. It may not be the right type. And if it's not the type, correct type, it'll go down here, find it's not the right type, and uh, exit early out of this or go to load fail down here which will then decrement any references we do have and call the post load function for the resource to set it correctly if it didn't find it as part of this 
then it will create a resource of the specific desired type and the specific desired size. Now, of course, if I'm going to be having this kind of flexibility thing where I have like, oh, it may not actually be a shader. Actually, the example I had earlier was an image. Creating the resource, I don't know if this is the, actually, A, the right type for it, because it may be like the advanced image instead, nor is it going to be the correct size for it. So what I need to be able to do is basically is to create some kind of, if I can't find it, uh, that is, then I need to create like a placeholder resource, which others can reference until the resource type is figured out and loaded later at some later point. Then this thing, when it comes back through, because obviously it's not loaded. If it doesn't exist here, then obviously A, it doesn't exist. B, it's supremely obviously not loaded. So it's going to have, it's going to be putting this onto like, oh, I'm uh, um, into a state where, oh, I'm just waiting for the resource. I'll keep checking it occasionally to see if, you know, if it exists and then it's the correct type and then fail out if not. So I want to basically be able to get rid of this or at least change this so I can just add a resource type, like a very generic resource type of the ID and then like a placeholder type, a placeholder resource that, I'll, that will then point to, okay. So that's what's going to happen. I need a placeholder resource that I can reference. So that basically means I no longer need to have knowledge of this in the future, right? Well, I may still need it for this, but I don't need to know the exact specific type yet. So in type desk, I'm going to need a couple of new uh, resource types. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to do something like that. Um, faux resource types. It doesn't actually matter, does it? Uh, let's call it faux resource. Mm. Faux, no, it'd be a faux resource resource. Whoops. Type. Like that. Faux resource resource. Type um, undefined, I guess, is what I'll call it. Equal. Okay, so I need what? I need a. Let me double check. I need an ID type library. Basically, I need two things. I need a library ID type for this resource library ID, which will just say 100. And definitely no, I haven't set that. So equals this. And then we have faux resource resource type placed equals that one. Something like that. Okay. Internally, what I'm going to have is a in the resource type there'll be a struct. Placed type um, struct. Replaced resource, which of course has the faux resource type. Void star p next, and hmm. Pro resource place placement resource. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like inject this at the top of the replay of the um, next chain. Um, hmm. So I got rid of because it would have to be the top thing, wouldn't it? 
if this resource has been replaced, you want this to be at the the very to be the very first type that's returned out. But I don't want to actually give the data out either. Hmm. Hmm, this is not as great. Okay. Top type, that still makes some sense, I guess. Resource, get type, no, because I want to be able to return the replacement type. Okay, back to resource. I'm creating an unknown type, at least. So, po res export uh, result set. Or so create undefined resource. I guess resource ID uh, for the ID. I have an unknown type. I still need the full resource functions. Star. I need, okay, so I still need this, and I still need to return it. Okay. Let's create this. This will help me figure out what I'm doing for the rest of it. So, fo result set. Result equals fo create resource. The ID type. No, uh, fo whatever. It's an undefined type. The resource functions. The size is the size of replaced resource. So that I don't have to put this on. So for the undefined resource, it'll be the actual integrated type. But for the other resources, if a, if a replacement happens, it'll be on the heap. And I'll have to manage removing it somehow. Not entirely sure how yet. And then I need to make sure it's not returned as part of the P data. Ooh, yeah. No, no, I can still do that. I can still do that. Um, P resource. If result dot value is full success, then so it created it. Then I need to set something. Then return result. Right. If, hmm. Oh yeah, I need to actually set the name. No, because I created it. Oh, this was a malloc. Ooh, right. That. Okay, so I need to, for the size of this, that's fine. Then I need to, P data equals that. I need to mem set the rest of it. Mem set P data. Uh, zero. Size. Size. This then becomes that of P data. Uh, rest. Zero the data area. Set the initial type in the data area. Mm hmm. Hmm.
Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. So I reset that. No, I, I, I set it to zero. So I don't actually need to do anything here. If I set it to zero, this whole thing would have been blanked out and the R-type would have been set. That'll be zero. That'll be null handle as well. Or maybe I should just do it. I should I should do it just to be safe. Although this is probably just going to... No, uh, it's still zeroed out. That's fine. So I could just return this. It'll still return that. Okay. Now, replacing a resource. Replacing an undefined resource. Let's just focus on that one. So that's the more interesting case. So can create undefined, create a defined resource, replace a resource, replace. Hmm. So let's say I don't have, so I've created an undefined resource. I'm in a loader right now. Uh, let's just choose here. Or rather, let's go with a simpler one, shader. I'm in the shader loader. I created one somewhere else. I'm here. I'm now loading my shader resource right now. And I reach, let's say, here or so like that. And I find out, hey, I'm an undefined resource. What do I do? I still basically want to create this. And I get down to the point where I'm actually going to load it somewhere up here. I think. Or if this is a resource that is of the incorrect type anyways, I don't want to, I do, I want to replace, okay, I will not re, uh, support replacing defined resources, just undefined ones for the moment. So if I put that restriction in place, then as part of this load process here, I can figure out whether or not I can actually put it in right now. If I can, then all I, then I need to do is I create the resource, which is going to be used by no one else. No one else knows about it. Then I can call bo place undefined or just that bo resource bo resource bo resource new resource okay and I guess for the moment something like this and I'll return whether or not it's the correct stuff so about here turn C if uh, if I get a type of old resource not equal undefined and I want to return bad, basically. Return a result that says, hey, go resource error. Um, resource not undefined. Negative this, but ten, like that. Okay, put that there. Add the result here. Add test here. Error that. Okay, great. Return that. Or sorry, return to oh, 
result of that. Okay. Otherwise, what happens, what's going to happen is... Okay, how do I do this safely? Okay, I need to sync it first. So let me get... I get this and then I want to like, I want a P old resource. old resource link dot lock and then I want to unlock it on the way out or can I get what is this what what type is this this was recursive right I don't think I can hmm Okay, rather, let me just do this. Uh, let me simplify this a little bit. Turn. No, either way. Ugh. Oh, resource success. Set that. Otherwise, result equals that. Otherwise, okay. This is this is how it can work, and then return result at the end. If this. So I need to both lock this and the new, do I need to lock the new resource? No, I do not. Or I shouldn't. But I will need to increment it both cases. And I'm assuming that whoever gave it to me has lock on both. Okay. So. It's the old resource. That means it's up. It is up for replacement. So what I can do is this get type, get data. No, get data. Would that work? I need to do where is it? It's not here yet. Okay. Well, uh, replacement, replace resource, star equals, get data of old resource, and then what's going to happen is star p old data, He's going to now equal in a moment. I need to do this in a specific order. Don't I? I've locked it. But still, if someone's reading this, then I need to do it in a very specific order. Let me check how I do specific ordering on um, C++. Okay. So from what I can see, what I'm going to have to do is I sync it, I lock it. I'm going to have to set, I need to make sure that the old data, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Resource equals new resource. I bow resource increment ref count of 
that new resource. I uh, if hmm, do I increment the use as well? I don't. No. I re I actually have no idea if I would. Not I'm not. Okay. Anyways, for the memory ordering stuff, I wanted to create an atomic fence. Uh, fence. Atomic thread fence with a memory order of oh i'm not actually not entirely sure if i just do what all i really want to do is i want to make sure that if when i set like p old data um r type to resource Um, placed. When I set that, I want to make sure it happens after the re new resource has actually been set in the same structure beforehand. That has to happen first. So that if someone comes in and reads this, then then, then they go back to read this. Um, so standard memory order. Relaxed, I think. I If I just do relaxed, hold on. And memory order. Relaxed. Relaxed operation. There are no synchronization or ordering constraints imposed on other reads or writes. Only this operation's atomicity is guaranteed. Okay, maybe that doesn't actually work for this. Uh, release fence F in thread A synchronizes with atomic acquire operation Y in if atomic store X Y reads value written by X. All non-atomic and relaxed atomic stores that are sequenced before. Hmm. Fence, fence synchronization. Okay. Is Can I just do like a store on something to make sure it actually gets written through. Okay, let me go to Atomic. Atomic store sub explicit Atomic store. Atomically replaces the value pointed to by object with the value of des or if whatever. But this only works for a standard Atomic types. Hmm. Okay, so this is where I'm just going to leave it for now. And if it becomes a problem in the future, I will come back to it, which is unfortunate. Threads correctly. Nor that the changes will made to the threads correctly. I'm not really entirely sure about this. I need to leave this as a to-do.
presumably it will be I'm not entirely sure. That's the thing. Okay. I set the new resource, blah, 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 blah. I set the thread. I set the R type to be next. I set the R type. Move on to this. Great. So old resource used to be undefined is now saying it's been replaced. Then I need to make sure that other things are going to be looking for multiple items. So what happens image loader when I'm checking for this, this can either be okay. When I am loading, It can either be the exact type I'm looking for, or it can be the undefined type. If it's if it's already a replaced type, then I'm why am I here, right? It's already been replaced by the actual type, presumably by another loader at some point, and then I need to follow that through. Do I need to follow that that through? No. Oh, I may have to transfer over like the loading case or something, wouldn't I? Hmm. Oh, that yeah, this is really this is really becoming complicated real fast. Okay, so what if I add a thing here, which is a boole which is a boolean that you can set that says like you know, incremented. Of course, it's going to have oh right, it has an incremented reference, right? Yeah. Increment the reference, and if oh resource get use count of this, of the old resource, not equal to zero, then we can say, hey, you know, oh, resource increment the use count of the new resource. And we set like p old data um, incremented used true, something like that. which is false normally, set a true here. Then we set the R type, switch over, we get out of here. That means on the case of, if, okay, when I decrement a use, decrement use count, I need to set, what is this, an integer? Yeah, int. use equals that. Now if I check the decrement, yeah, int ref count equals equals that, that, that. If the resource use count, uh, sorry, if use count equals zero, then I need to say I'm the one setting it down to zero. If that and fo resource get type of resource equals replaced, then that means I need to actually come uh, get this. Source. And then if e data is 
in Kubernetes views. Then I need to do uh, flow resource. Okay. P data incremented use equals false. That's changed now. And P data, I need to increment the use of this thing. Or decrement, sorry. Flow resource. Decrement count of that by that. Turn use count there. Just a nice little thing, right? Use count of equals zero. Mm -hmm. Now I need to go into if I'm, oh yeah, if I'm decrementing the reference count and it's set to zero, use count, do, 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 do. If this equals, um, If this equals the replaced type, then I need to do, basically, I kind of have to do the same thing, except I need to I would have to do that here too, wouldn't I? Because there's Hmm. No, no, no. I can do that. Unload data goes down into this. Hmm. Not going to have an unload function, right? Hmm. Resource decrement, the reference count. I go through, I'm destroying it. So I do need, yeah. So resource decrement, ref count, and key data, new uh, replacement resource. I need to do that. And if I do this, I had this, then I need to do that as well. Still at the end of it. Okay. So let me uh, have that as a work in progress, right? Yeah, so there's the old stuff. So at this point, nothing should break quite yet because I haven't done anything. I haven't, I've, I've just added new functions. Okay, yeah, stuff that did actually already break. Okay, so after fixing the missing header, now, like we should be in good state. We don't have any errors or fatals. Okay, great. So let's actually get this going. So the idea is here in material loader, I am, I'll do it with the, the shader as that's, that is used compared to images. Shader is used and it's one of the simpler types. So let's say I don't actually find it. I need to actually add Ooh, if, hmm. So 
So let me go into here. Let me create a second one, which is just just uh, does number two, but it doesn't have a type. It doesn't have a size. This will create a one without a type and stuff. It will just create the undefined type instead. So let me get this in place. Full pool, find, remove, add. Here it is. We do this. Number two, get rid of these two. Okay, we don't have this or that because instead, create undefined resource instead. Wonderful. So we do that. We go back to material loader. We're not going to do that. We're going to have this number two. We have the pool resource, resource pool, the ID, and we don't need these anymore. Okay, great. If so, oops, type, type equals that type. Not equal. And type not equal the undefined type. So if it's neither of these ones, then it goes into this like, okay, it's not the type I'm expecting. It's not the undefined type. Oh, and. Uh, Type not equal for graphics resource. <sighs> not that. Um, for resource resource type replaced because it could also be something that I pull from the find pool and then it's like it flips from undefined to replaced immediately. And by the by the time it comes down here, then I need to do it. so. If it's either of these, it's great. Um, so I do this. I move on down to here. Data image. I increment its use. If not equals loaded, hmm. Hmm. How do I do this? If it's not loaded and it is not loading. So I need to do, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't make a change over here, would I? This is the case of like, is the thing that I'm looking at, which may be the replaced or the undefined or the resource I'm actually specifically looking for, is it loaded or not? And if it's not loaded, start loading it which would work both ways. If it's not loaded and it is, what? If it's not loaded and it's undefined or the replaced, that'll just basically say, that'll just, um, when the undefined is loaded, that's in the, in the replaced state. If it's already the proper type and it's loaded, I don't need. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have to. Do, I don't actually have to resolve like changing over to the new resource, the to the replacement resource here. I would have to do it later when I actually go get around to actually loading the thing, because it's still considered right now to be in the loading state. This thing is loading state. That isn't. I need to resolve that later, when I actually get down to this. And I'm checking, like, is all the sub-resources loaded? Okay, is there anything else I need to do at this point? 
uh, the image to resource. Okay, I was doing this one. Here, here, here. Okay. If it's not this and not this and not this, so it's just neither of these three. Is there another case? Oh, right. What if it's not the top level? What if it's a if it's a level underneath? Okay, I need to also do and not flow resource as type uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, data dot fragment creator, and it's looking for this type. So and like that. So it's neither of these not at the top level type, it's neither of these, and this type does not exist somewhere in the next chain. Then we get through this. We go through this, we're going down to the load. We're going to go to the load sync. So we go to, up to the point where it's finalizing these. Somewhere in here, here we go, in the to load section. Check if we what we need has been loaded yet. So we are, what is this? that okay load data let me check what the load data type is it's this resource that uh, okay so it's the data that i'm looking for the data subtype which is the this and this right yeah so i need to why are these sub resources i'm going through and checking the worst resource load state which would still work if the undefined type failed, then it would obviously not have loaded the sub thing. If it loaded, it's in. If it's unloaded, it's obviously not there yet. Okay. Yeah, because the loaded state of the, un of the replace type is going to point to the next thing. So I need to go, okay, if this, then I need to do two things. If I need to figure out the type for, okay, no. Everything uh, that I've requested is loaded. So, uh, where is the image? Do I have data fragment shader? Okay, data dot. I don't, I don't even have like a use for the actual, the image yet. So it's just this equals this. Okay. See if the fragment creator resource handle was replaced. If so at this point, they say that they are loaded. Okay, so let's work with that. Pro resource get type. So this will be the top level type. If it's loaded, that means of it.data.fragment shader equals replaced. And what I need to do is I need to replace it with whatever I need to decrease decrement. Hmm. This is a subtype, right? So I, okay. Please. Okay. I need to get, I need to, I need to get out the actual placement handle first. Do I have a way to do that? Get ID, get type, get O as export, O dot set, O resource, get placement, resource, resource. Get that, get it out like that. Okay. 
Get this for the resource. And okay, if I get the type of the resource equals that and get data. No, I want to make sure get low get state. No, I can just get it directly, right? Or no. Resource. Let's go state loaded. Then I'll do something, otherwise I would return. Load no handle. Then I want to do conversion to this. Get data of the resource. Turn P data of basement resource. No, no, sorry. This faux result. Sorry, faux resource. I could just return that, right? Just return that. There's no like error case. Either it does or it doesn't. Yeah. So we simplify that. That. Uh, where was I here? This, then I need to follow resource. New handle. Equals to resource. Get placement. IP dot data dot fragment shader. So increment it. Oh, increment ref count of the placement resource. And decrement the ref count of the old one. Uh, the other way around. In case that would actually cause its destruction. Here. An it.data. Fragment shader equals replacement resource, I think. It's this, we know it's loaded, so we check if it's that type. Otherwise, otherwise we already know if it, if it, it's loaded and it's not this type, then it is the specific type you're looking for. We, what we would want to do is we want to get the data, type data. Do I not have a thing for searching for the specific type? I thought I did. Yeah, no, I do. It's right there. That with the shader for that. I sure uh, hope that this is as logical as can be. Okay, first, uh, I need to make doubly sure. I am build, I am sorry, uh, 
doing this in synchronous on the same thread. So I can follow this, I can follow this through the whole way. So let me do so. So what we are going to do, we are going to go through to about here, right? Okay, let's try it. We hit this material fragment shader. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in the pool yet. This is the first one we're looking for. So we do this, we add a new one. So it should be an undefined type. So we're going to get the type. Uh, that is resource undefined type. So it's not that, it's that. Okay. So we have that. We're going through, it's going to load the fragment shader. That's good. Then we're going to come back through eventually to this point. Okay, it failed to load. Why? Which one failed to load? I don't know which uh, type failed to load. Oh, I should have... I should have gone through the load process manually. My bad. Here. Okay, we're here. not doing this we're going to go into the resource load resource task fantastic we're going to go in here we're going to import it we get it it's going to be a create info of some type great we have it we're going to go into the load function which is part of the simulation i believe mm -hmm. okay we're here we're going to go through until we can find a type that can load it otherwise Go to the that point. Okay, we're here. This will be this should go into shader loader. Right. Indeed it has. We go inside, we're going inside. Great. Oh, I don't actually support right. I don't actually support if it's a different type. If Uh, this is the top level, so it's if it's not okay. I need to else if resource type type equals this type not equal that and type not equal to po resource. Resource type or undefined. So if it's neither of these, then it goes out, errors out anyways. Otherwise, we carry on. We say, hey, we need to create info. We get the data. We're going to go through to this. To this point. We're going to go to the look, the point where we're actually loading it to load. Blah, 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 blah. We're in here. Great. Then we're going to say, At this point, oh, resource, yeah, type of the resource, so to uh, it dot resource, if type equals oh, uh, replaced, or sorry, undefined. Because again, any any resource can only be loaded. Have one thing loading it at, at any one time. The, there's flags in place to ensure that. So if type is undefined, then it means need the actual resource. We need to replace this place holder. With the actual resource. How do I do this?
Hmm. Okay, I, do I have... I have access to the resource pool, so I can actually directly say, hey, resource pool, can you update yourself for um, some whatever value, right? I need, I need to do that, so... Tell resource pool about replacement. Otherwise, you need to replace this placeholder with the actual resource. Hmm. Replace with the actual resource. Am I using this for anything else? I don't think so. I could just do this. It's an AND reference, so I can replace it. So basically, it would be this, right? If this... No, no, because it's undefined. I need to do the replacement myself right here. Okay. So I need to... Okay, I need to create the resource. Faux resource. Oh, no, handle. Oh, okay, I need result equals oh, create resource. I'm creating the resource, it's going to have oh, resource get ID from the old resource, so it dot resource. The type is going to be the shader. It's going to be p resource function, so... Oh, no, 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 I get that from... That's from the resource pool, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I would have to pass this through the resource pool. So at the same time as I'm creating it, I would do the replacement as well. Or kind of leave the replacement to the resource pool. So foe... I mean, I kind of already have a function that does that. I just don't have it doing the replacement. I can find it. Come on. Basically doing this. Hmm. Resource type, resource size. <sighs> Do this. Resource ID. Hmm. Be able to return something like that. Not, hmm. Let's try to implement it and see what will happen. We do this, we get all this stuff. What's going to happen is we are going to, of course, resource pool. We're going to get a, a unique lock. And we need to find it. This is what? This is just a faux reset. Faux resource Ooh, I need like an iterator or something like that. Key resource pool 
resources.begin. I need, uh, basically I need to find, right? No, this is an old pointer. I need to find it somewhere, wherever it is, wherever it's hiding in here. equals what e resource pool resources dot data plus p resource pool resources dot size while p resource not equals p end resource if okay so this needs to actually equal the beginning of it So this equals this plus that. Start, okay, if o resource get ID resource start the resource equals the resource ID that I'm looking for. And we need to break. And we have it. If P resource equals P and resource, that means we didn't find it. And we return null pointer. So null handle. Didn't find the resource we were supposed to be replacing. Kind of, maybe, hold on. Kind of fix this up. Standard abort. I need to, I need to, Handle better. So this is a terrible way to handle things. I need to be able to return something more valuable, but I'm not going to do it right now because I'm in the middle of trying to get the very basic implementation working. So if at this point I have the P resource, it's the ID I'm looking for. So then I want to call Bo result set result equals Bo resource replace. Now, what I want to do is I want to call this create, first of all. Will be the replacement. New replacement resource ah, call it with the callbacks the resource size a new resource great otherwise so I have the old one I have the new one so now I need to do result equals bow resource replace the old resource so the star p resource and new resource so the replacement has happened if this is the case I need to pull resource decrement e ref count of the new resource Then a resource. 
create the new resource. Repla run the replace operation where the old resource becomes a pointer to the new resource. So that means this thing should be considered loaded by now. Or I would, okay, I have the new resource. Old resource, new resource. Hmm. If this is the case, then what I want to do at this point is I would unlock. No, I need star p resource. Get the old resource. Then p resource pool uh, sync dot unlock. It was a exclusive lock, right? Yeah. So I got that. Then I want to decrement. I already, so that's already been incremented and then put onto there. So that's fine. And, oh no, sorry. Star P resource equals new resource. Couple resources. Decrement use of old resource. P resource pool. No, fo. Decrement ref count of the old resource. So we do that. So back to here. Place. So M resource pool. equals this um, size of O shader and it's local to me comes that we tell about the placement immediately if the resource not equals O null handle or if it equals O null handle then we have some serious something bad happened Now to do failure. Otherwise, we have the new resource. So what I want to do is I'm going to say IP dot resource. I need to increment its use. Let's increment ref count. No, I, I need to, no, I'm going to increment the reference before I actually return it. Off. So, increment ref count of new resource. Turn new resource. So that's all, that's been given back here. This already has been incremented, I say, hey, it.resource equals new resource. Then I go into here and I call this stuff. Hmm. But the state of the new resources is kind of all over the place. It really is. Place that with this. 
What if I was to create... No, I can't create the resource independently. What if I pass basically most of this stuff? Like, I don't pass... Why do I pass this in? Hmm. Okay. What if... Okay, I need to resolve the... Um different states. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's how I need to do it. When I do a replace, I want to instead do, I need the ability to create a loaded resource. So I have the ability to create a undefined resource, which is unloaded, and a blank-ish but defined type resource, which is unloaded. I need to create one that is already preloaded. So here's how we do it. Bo res export. Bo result set. Bo create preloaded resource. Or just loaded. It's just a loaded resource. It's not preloaded. Bo resource. ID, ID, which uh, we have the functions for loading, for extra loading stuff afterwards. I have the size of the resource, the return, the return for the handle of, the, of it, and then I need these four. Oh, copy that. Okay, do that. <clears throat> so this is uh, the P source data, P source, remove function, the unload context, and unload function. And I need a comma for that. Okay, take this to the other side, to the source side. Where do we got replacement for replace, create, create loaded. Okay. So the first part of this is to already, uh, is to use this already. So for result set result equals for create resource with the ID. Oh, I need to pass through the type for the moment. We'll do this, this. That. So I will actually bring that through. Type um, resource functions, p resource functions, size, and that. If result dot value is pro success, we successfully created it, then we'll do post load stuff, otherwise we return results regardless. So here, I am going to call the post load it's down here. The post load function and stuff is down here in a separate namespace. So I need to move this up. To about here. Great. So we call the post load function with the resource, which is that the create info, which I don't have. I don't even know why I need it. Uh, the result. The so okay. The source. The move the unload contact the unload function and the post load function does decrement the ref count at the end 
and does do that. That I kind of want to get rid of. But I won't do it now. Oh, that is assuming I'm passing it in. Okay, if null equal bow null handle, then do that. Otherwise, so I need to increment the ref count of the new resource. Then go into this, which will set, which will do the loading stuff, set it to loaded, then return that. So I create a loaded resource, and then I need the, abil the um, ability to call that directly, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I need to do, I need to call this directly in the pool. So we got to replace, so res or resource, resource, pool, loaded, replace. I guess it's basically kind of the same thing, but with these extra f bits. So there's the, re the old replace one. Here's the new one. Which I guess would be basically the same thing. Except. Create loaded resource. There's this, 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 this. E source, E move. E unload context. Loaded. Unload uh, function. Like that. Same thing here. Same stuff. Okay, just add a bit more. Um, would be three. Should be count of three. So. The reference count of the new resource should be three because we have the reference for the pool. We have reference for placed resource and that's being passed back. Yeah, we kind of do the same thing up here. Make sure I got that right. Yep. Okay. Rolling back to the shader loader. Hmm. So that's going to mean I need to I need to move these around just a little bit, don't I? So I need this needs to be moved out side. So this is common to all these calls through here. And I need to say if it's this, do this, else that. Because when I do the resource loaded replace, the, f the resource I was originally given is already um changed into the into the loaded state due to the resource pool replace the replace call does set that so i don't need to go into the post load function for it to set anything so i need to do pool loaded replace this this is this um it dot data function the unload context is this the unload 
function is this resource. I don't even need this anymore. I because like this uh object is just being discarded. If yeah, no. I just need to decrement the references as they're no longer needed. Decrement. No longer needed. So that's for resource. Decrement the ref count of the original. And a new one. this correct type this or this it's neither of these yeah if it's already replaced then I'm not doing anything with it okay back to material loader so I have this what am I doing exactly uh, so this would if it's replaced change over to the new replacement resource then carry on with the normal stuff I think so. Go down here. None of these. N doesn't have type. Okay. Add two. Because, right, yeah, because I'm replacing this with this. Because I don't actually know the type ahead of time. I just know it's not existing yet. Okay. Let's see if this works. this does work, then I just have to do it for all of the types beforehand. Uh, yeah, okay. I just want to see if it works broadly first. Which means it does not work uh, yet at all, looks like. It's stuck somewhere. Where are you stuck? Right, there's, ooh, do I have a while loop? I do. Oh, yes. Or this. That's not so, oh, that means that's also up here. Uh, okay, we don't quite have a loaded resource yet. We're not stuck. Okay, let's go through resource loading process. From the material loader, from in here, right? So, let's go. I'm here. I didn't find it. I'm creating it. It's an undefined type. Go in here. Uh, it's an undefined type, so I should not. Yeah. I'm going to go through. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to load it. It'll happen almost immediately. I'm going to go into here, F11. We go into here, we get the create info. We do have the create info. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we go inside of this, which will take me to here. Until either it hits this or this. It'll hit this. This is the material, the shader loader. Great. We're going to go through. Okay, so it's an undefined type. right now. So 
gonna go through we're gonna just go through this regular process where we did put it out onto the load the two loads section right we're not gonna exit out yeah okay then I need to wait until I get through to here again yeah yeah okay if this it's not this if this, not this. If this, there we go. I create a new resource. All right. So seemingly, it's been loaded. This is, let me check the state of this. Resource get state of the new resource. And let me get the count as well, actually. It should be three. It should be loaded. It should be three. Let's do this. Load state, loaded, count, three, perfect. So we do this, we go through to this point, and then we want to check the material loader, because we're going to be going through to about here. Oh, let me check the type of the old thing as well. Oh, no, I already know it's undefined. Okay, let me, yeah, no, but I want to make sure that the new type is resource. Get type of the it.resource. Then eventually it'll come over to here. One oh one, which will be. Type definition, the replaced one. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is working as expected. Great. We get over to here, it just never happens. Why? Okay, I've created a bunch of things. Info, verbose. Stuff, 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 stuff. And it just seemingly doesn't happen, or what? Stop. <clears throat> right? Is it just not coming through to this point? Okay. Sub resource load state is unloaded. Okay, let me just make sure it's not going into the failed state. But it's also never coming into this state. Why? Okay. I go into here. So I have what two resources? This, uh, is not null. This is retrieved as unloaded. Why is it still? What is? Hmm. I did check that they are considered loaded correctly. Oh, is the old resource.
considered to be loaded. Did I miss that? It is considered unloaded. Whoops. Because once you... If this is... Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I now do a loaded replace. That means I know that it has been loaded and loaded with a replacement. I uh, yeah. And you're only going to replace it if it's loaded right now, right? Loaded replace. Resource, resource down to This becomes loaded, this becomes P old data. Um <clears throat> sorry, old resource. So it's um state equals loaded. There we go. Okay. Okay. So that's almost that. Now I need to be sure loaded to be replaced. Hmm. If I'm replacing it with something that I know is loaded, then I can do that, this. But am I sure? Maybe I get rid of the unloaded. If I get rid of this and just create create resource, which is already preloaded, or you can have a, either an undefined or this, get rid of this type. That would make sense. Because you because e there's only really two states where you're creating this. Either you already have the data ready and loaded and you know what type it is, or you don't. So this function doesn't really make much sense anymore. So what I'm going to do is offline, I'm going to go through and replace all the other locations where I used to have, let me check, uh, or yeah, where I, all the locations where I have this old thing where I used to create, pre-create a resource with the known ahead of time specific type and replace it with basically this system where I'm going to create an undefined type instead and work use the replacement mechanism to be able to replace it with the actual type of it once the loaders decided to go through and figure out all that stuff. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, that's that. So until next time, when that's resolved, and I probably added a bunch of tests to inch to... Uh, ensure that the logic I have here actually works in all cases. Until then, cheers.